is the only independent scorecard. It's an annual scorecard to say how is the world and all the countries in the world, how are they doing in terms of meeting nutrition goals. But it's not just about outcomes, it's also about the things that we do to make those outcomes happen. It's about how much money we spend, about what policies we put in place, what laws we pass, that kind of thing. So it's trying to hold everyone accountable. Is what you say you do what you actually do, and, and if not, why not? There's one big headline finding, really, and that's that commitment really matters. Malnutrition, ending malnutrition, is a choice. The number of countries that are on track to meet so-called undernutrition goals uh, is improving every year. Every year we do it, uh, more and more countries are, are doing, doing well. But there are some indicators and some goals that we're just collectively just doing really badly on. And then for some outcomes, like obesity and overweight, we're just going in exactly the wrong direction. Everything's increasing. We found that about only half the countries out of the 193 actually have the data to be able to track progress against all of the goals that we measure. We found some really big blind spots in the nutrition firmament. For example, uh, even though diet and poor quality diet is the number one risk factor in the global burden of disease, there's no global database on food consumption. We don't have very good data on um, how much countries spend on nutrition. We don't have very good data on who's making a commitment and who's not making a commitment. Now, why does that matter? It matters because um, if we don't have the data, we can't hold people accountable. We don't measure progress if we don't have the data. So it's about accountability. Nutrition matters um, for people because it's like the bedrock of their existence. It's, if you try to build something on malnutrition, it's like trying to build a house on quicksand. It affects everything, all the, all the hardware that we have in our bodies. It affects our immune system. It affects the rate at which we grow. It affects our body shape. It affects our brain development. Uh, it affects a whole range of things that allow us to fulfill our potential or not. Some estimates suggest that GDP per capita losses are 10% globally, and that's the same amount that was lost in the, at the height of the global financial crisis. So being malnourished, the, the world's burden of malnourishment is the same as it's an annual global financial crisis. And it's surprisingly large, but it's not surprising when you start thinking about um, what improved nutrition does. So improved nutrition means that you're much less likely to be living in poverty, means you're much more likely to be uh, earning a higher wage, starting up your own business, um, supplying more labor in general in the labor market. When you add that all up at the national level, it can be anything from 6 to 15 percent additional GNP. And the investments in nutrition generate a massive return, 16 dollars for every dollar you invest in scaling up nutrition interventions. In addition to the macro effects of, of improved nutrition um, and avoiding malnutrition, at the household level there are, there are massive effects. A recent study that we highlight in the report shows that for China, getting a diagnosis of diabetes adds a burden to the household equivalent to 16% of household income. And that, is, that is just a massive burden. Where there's commitment and leadership, action follows, and it's usually effective action. So that's very important, but it has to be the right action, and it has to be action at three different levels. Increase the coverage of programs. If you've got this great program, but it's only reaching 10% of the people who need it, it's, it's not going to be terribly effective. The second level is make sure your development programs, all of them, are working at least in line with and supporting nutrition. Now make it harder for people in power to do the wrong thing or to do nothing and make it easier for them to do the right thing. What I'd like to see, first of all, I'd like to see all actors come together because um, you think about the things that create malnutrition, there's some very powerful forces that come together to create it and so you need really powerful alliances to overcome it. We can't do it without governments but they can't do it on their own. They need NGOs, they need uh, businesses, they need development banks to come together. Every sector needs to contribute to malnutrition reduction. It's not just the health sector, it's not just the agriculture sector or the food system, it's all these different sectors. You can do two types of things, I guess. One, one thing is you can act on your own nutrition, you can act for someone in your family, you can act for someone in your community, you can act 
for someone in your school. But you can also be very, you can also play a very important role in, in calling out people who have access to power, people who can make decisions. Again, whether it's in your school, whether it's in your clinic, whether it's in your government. Ask your leaders, um, those people over there, they're the same as us, but their nutrition is, is much better than ours. What, what's going on? I think there's a real opportunity for you to, to bring the issues of malnutrition higher up the, the agenda, the national agenda, the development agenda, the international agenda.